just saying. But were you entertained? I was so entertained. That just blew me away. The only Thoroughly. reason I am here. All right. Well, on that note, welcome back to Tales from the Service Industry. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'm your host. I'm Bill. I'm here tonight with Andy. He's joining us again from the number that will surprise you. Episodes mm. one and two. The number is not important, <laughs> but it will surprise you. <laughs> Always. Miss B, welcome back. Hey, guys. And our resident deviant on the fourth mic is Liz. Hi, team. Andy, thank you for coming back and joining us again. Appreciate I you being here. I am beyond thrilled now, to be here. Now, when you were here the last time, you shared with us that you had so many more stories, and I hope you came locked and loaded. I'm so excited. So in the preparation of this episode, since the last time, I was like, gosh, I know there's more stories. And as things happen during my day, I've created a journal of notes that have triggered memories of yesteryear. Oh my gosh. So, some, some of which that probably should have been forgotten. Probably. Probably should have long <laughs> been forgotten and should have actually probably never happened. But that's not here nor there. So in preparation of this particular episode, I'm like, Bill. Just, just like that, nice and husky. <laughs> Bill. Bill. <laughs> let, me, let me share with you some titles. And he said, oh, Lord. <laughs> like, we have to have you back. Well, how fast can you get back here? Oh, so, love it. And there's been a few more stories that have been added to the collage since then. The uh, cornucopia of customer service stories. Mm. So, um, so yeah, this can evening, we call it like Andy's Bible of something something? We, I think we need like a good name for Andy's it. Andy's cornucopia. I think, mm. I think that's it. <laughs> Hmm. Mm. I don't know. We'll, we'll, let's put a pin in this and we'll see how the episode ends. For sure. But yeah. can you admit you think at the pod like every day you work, like thinking of these stories and you're like, oh, I got to write this down. <laughs> yeah. And there, there, you. it's usually a time I'm like, I totally forgot about that. But man, oh boy. Oh my God. This one's a doozy. And then I do that and I'm like, oh, this is also a doozy. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting episode. Oh. I'm excited. Well, let's see how it tracks. And uh, with the company present, this might be more epic than the last time. Oof. Is that even possible? Yes! It is possible. It's a tall order, but it's yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm excited. Let's drink up. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in, in giving some of these thoughts, I did, so I nicknamed everything. Right? Oh, so I threw all these nicknames out because that, just so I knew, so I gave them some. And so the first story that came to mind and it wanted to have it on the last episode and we didn't have time and it didn't dawn on me. Literally, I'm walking out. I'm walking to my car and I get in. I fired up. I was like, oh, man, how did I forget that? So, All right. Well, let, let's launch with that one. Then. Let's launch with how did I forget this one? So I'd been working in our tourism resort detail for probably uh, like a year and a half. I hadn't been there too long. And it was at a time where we were very short staffed. So I ended up working overtime graveyard shifts and nighttime shifts in the same area of all the resorts, but I wasn't the resort officer. I was like a patrolman, but I was in that area. And so all the hoteliers knew like, hey, you know, Andy's out here working. If you have any problems overnight, all the night auditors call Andy, he'll come handle your problem. Okay. So I get a phone call from the director of rooms who was working late because he had a bunch of big events or whatever. And so she calls me up. She's like, Andy, are you working? I go, what else do I do? Yes, of course I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, okay, good. You got to get her right now. Okay. Like, is it like life or death or what's going on? Like, she's can like, you, you give me any background, please? Exactly. All I get is you need to get her right now. And then she hangs up. Oh. Which is, okay. by the way, by the way, the most common way in working hotels, you need to get here and then hang up oh. constantly. So I'm like, everything's a cliffhanger, right? Like everything's like, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of thing am I walking into? Exactly. Like, you have no yeah. idea like what to prep for mentally, physically. Nothing. Like No clue. So I was like, all right, well, it's Saturday night. So I get this phone call and I go, okay, well, so I drive over and I pull in the parking lot. It's a full service hotel. So it's, you know, almost 300 rooms, I think, full service hotel. Actually, it was Caddy Corner from one of Bill's old hotels. And it's one of the hotels that if you've ever stayed at... Uh, uh, it has a very lovely atrium that usually includes koi ponds with fish oh. and big mountain things and okay. a lovely breakfast bar in the morning. So all these hotels are usually designed that the hotel opens up into the inside. So you can see into the interior and they have all kinds of aquatics and all kinds of weird things going on in the middle. Right? Cool. So, yeah. So sounds it's, horrible to upkeep. Sounds, oh, it's <laughs> mid. Oh, you should so yeah, talk to the chief engineer. It's yeah, smart yeah for sure. So I come pulling up and so... She's standing outside and she's waving me down, right? Like, oh. like I don't know where I'm going, first off, but <laughs> fair enough. So I <laughs> pull up and uh, so we called her Char. I go, yes, Char, what can I do for you? She's like, you got to get, you got to come to look at this. You got to come get, you got to come help. I'm like, all right, what's going on? She's like, <laughs> look, we have two or three events going on. One of which is a wedding, okay. which 
if you've all had a hotel that hosts weddings, you know. Drunkens, troublemakers, drama. Yes. <laughs> so I come in, so I'm walking, so I'm sauntering in, because it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock on Saturday. So I come sauntering in, and she's like, come on, come on, come on. I was like, okay, right. <laughs> well, this particular hotel was a little extra in their lobby decor. So they had this like fake mountain thing built. In had, the lobby? In the lobby. They had this wow. fake looking mountain thing that had a waterfall. So it was a free flowing waterfall that came out of the little mountain thing into their koi pond. Wait, had, was someone in the koi pond? That would have been better. Ah, Wait, can, I'm dying. Can I ask a quick interjection? Yes. Is this the same hotel as the Disco Dildo? Yes, it is. Okay. <gasps> well, on top of the mountain is this animatronic lion. And so what it's a full heck? size like Lion King looking lion. <laughs> That is like turning its head. In every, a hotel. Every 15 minutes. Giving a growl. Plus or minus. Bingo. So every 15, 20 minutes, the thing like turns on and it like turns. It, and it like turns, right? Hell? So it's like this really cheap Disney knockoff animatronic that they put in. For sure. Right? For, For sure. sure. <laughs> right? Okay. So just so we know what this is. But it's a full size looking lion that stands on top of this lion. thing. Right? Okay. And so as I come in there, she's like, look. So I look up at the top. And this lady... Someone's riding the lion. Yes. Are you kidding? On top of the lion. Woo! With like the it's hand a mechanical ball. Bull. Bingo. Hand overhead, screaming, Woo! screaming at the top of the lungs. Ride me, big guy, ride Shut me. Shut oh, the F up. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Is she clothed? Yes, but it's in like wedding style. She wasn't like the bride or anything, but but she was in a she full was gown. In, no, she was in like the what we call the California gown, which is like the short, Got like mid thigh looking gown. If I'm you're standing you, that's up, that's Liz's favorite. To, to give a real definition, that is a cocktail dress. <laughs> yes, you'd be the more subject matter expert than I would be on that. Yes, you have been taken to school. I have <laughs> earned my degree, and I came back with a nice T-shirt. So you failed. As she's sitting on this thing, right? She's Oh, full frontal. Legs straight out to the side. Did you get a good view? (sighs) Well, as I walk in, I look up, and in my head, I'm like, God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Because she's obviously very inebriated. Right. She's not going to listen to any reason because she's screaming at the top of her lungs. And I'm like, how am I going to get her down off that thing? That's what my, in my head, I'm like, she's not going to go with the program at all. Oh, God. And as I'm sitting there looking at her, like trying to figure out what I'm going to do. All I now hear is, yeah, baby. And I look now to my left. And on the other side of the mountain is her fiance, boyfriend, husband, whoever this guy was. Just cheering her Cheering her on. And I was like, fantastic. So so the second I start to kind of intercede here, (laughs) he's also going to have a problem, right? Because he's all about this. A hundred percent. So I looked to Char and I'm like, have you tried to get her down? And she's like, What have you done? She's like, we've tried pretty much everything. She's not going to come down. What? Oh, lordy. So I scream at her, hey. And she looks down. She's like, what? Yep. (laughs) <laughs> and i'm like get down from there and she's like no <laughs> i'm like oh lord what am i gonna do her let me guess does she say what are you gonna do in so many words okay so i'm like well i'm not getting her down so i go over to boyfriend fiance whoever this guy was i go look dude here's the deal you get her down off of there we'll all be cool you don't get her down off of that. You're going to jail and she's going to jail. Ooh, is this an option oh. A, option B? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to do all the hard work. I'm going to make the guy who's got the relationship further do all the hard work. That's mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. That is super smart. Smarter, not harder. Yeah. So anyhow, he... Uh, I, th- I, think, I think she wanted the harder, not smarter. Oh, for sure. Which is <laughs> why you think she was on a line and not her fiance, boyfriend, who this guy was, right? I mean... <laughs> So she eventually comes down, right? Boyfriend talks oh, her down. Oh, man, I'm disappointed. I thought you were oh, going to no. have to, like, climb up there oh, and get her. Blow no. dart. <laughs> y- you're not going to be disappointed yet. <gasps> oh, no. Ooh, there's more. Okay. Pump the brakes. But the wait, brakes. there's more. So she comes climbing down, right? I was like, oh, hallelujah. All right, this is going to be pretty easy. So she gets down. I go, okay, are you guys staying at the hotel? Okay. In my head, I'm like, if we can get her into a room, lock them up. Then we're done. We're done. And then give them give them a threat. If we hear a peep from you, you're evicted. Oh, you're yeah. done. Yeah, you do. The, the we, we call it the felony finger. You wave the felony finger at them. Oh, I like that. Don't you ever do that again. And we're going to be fine. Stay in your room. You're grounded. Yes. 
Unfortunately, they were not staying at the hotel. So now I got to get them out of there. Oh. Oh. So now in my head, I'm like, well, they're two drunkies. I can't put two drunkies in a car because they're going to crash and kill somebody. That's not going to work. So I go, okay, well, how'd you guys get here? Oh, we drove. Oh, Lord. Okay. So as I'm trying <laughs> oh. to figure this out, unbeknownst to me, Lion Rider plus boyfriend, fiance. Lion Tamer. Character, or Tamer. <laughs> Or arouser. <laughs> might be a lay in arouser. Right. Might be the better way to put that. Okay. Right? Are now in a argument over what they're going to do and how they're going to get home. So now they went from, yeah, baby, go to like, F you, no, F you, no. I, well, you called the cops. No, you called the cops. No, none of you called the cops. The hotel did because you're out of control. Time to go. <laughs> so as this starts to progress, I'm like, I don't have time for this anymore. We got to go. If we're going to call you a taxi or if you got family in this marriage thing wedding you would let's go so as i start to walk them out i'm like let's get you out of the lobby first we get them outside well more family members start coming out. i'm like hey who claims these two <laughs> bozos over here so we can get them out of here well she starts getting mouthy he starts getting mouthy oh of course so finally he's like f this and he walks off okay I was like, well that went swimmingly well so he walks out now i'm left with the lion arouser <laughs> Is she like pretty intoxicated at this point? Still. Pretty is a subjective word. She was ugly intoxicated, not pretty intoxicated. Oh, damn. Ooh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sloppy drunk. Sloppy. Okay. Yeah, not good. Like on a uh, blood alcohol level. What are we talking? Like a 0.12 kind of a thing? We're talking that her blood alcohol was probably higher than her GPA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, ouch. Boyfriend yeah. didn't want to deal with it. He's no. out. Peace. Yeah, he was like, I'm out. So he rolls out. Okay, great. So I'm stuck with her. So anyhow, she gets mouthy. Long story short, she decides to assault Andy. You're kidding me. Oh. How so? She puts hands on you? Yes. Where? By the look on his face. Down probably, there? Probably not no. where he wanted. Face. In the conversation of trying to figure out how we're going to get you either home or whatever, I'm not drunk. I'm going to do whatever I want. No, you're not. We need to get you out of here. She goes, I'm going back to my real boyfriend, which is the lion. Oh. Are you no. So she turns to beat feet back into the hotel, to which point I'm like, nope, we're not doing this. So you kind of put... So I grab her by the arm because she's walking away from me. So I grab her yeah. and go, no, 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 hold on. So I go, look, come back here. Well, as I pull her back, she turns around. She winds up. Winds up, which I don't see right away. And I see this slow, old-fashioned haymaker coming. Oh, no. Like from left field. And she's probably like five... Three, maybe five, four, five, three, a hundred pounds, maybe soaking wet. She was fairly petite. So I see this haymaker coming and I had enough time to think like, is she really going to hit me? <laughs> so the first thing I'm like, is she really going to hit me? Second off, is this really happening? And third, I go, how bad is this going to look? Because I have now probably presumably family members, and everything else. So if I you cut her a, off at the you pass have a crowd. and like do some sort of use of force move to take her to the ground, You're gonna be on YouTube. I am now going to be dealing with... <laughs> much more than this like slow drunken so do i just take maker. it from this hundred pound girl so what <gasps> happens is as i see it coming i step back away does she fall she misses <laughs> goes right past me and as she starts to spin around yeah i what? then grab both of her hands clickety click clack right in the nice! hand right? oh fancy schmancy right? smoothly to which char was like oh Sweet. And she's watching it. She's like, oh, right. Like she's watching this whole thing play out. Right. So I'm like, all right, we're going to jail. Right. Like that's how we're going to solve this. We're done. That's attempted assault. Well, it's a little great. I'm like, we're going to go for drunk in public. We're going to do the least amount of crime here. She probably okay. didn't really mean You're it. Nice. She's drunk, whatever. Right. She's, you know, uh, she's got, she's got, had a bad night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's not good. That's just drunk in public. You'll get a ticket. It'll probably get dismissed anyhow. And we'll all go about our day. Right? Wow. Okay. Which is what I thought. So <laughs> in handcuffs, she goes. Okay, and I just happened. I'm sorry. Clarifying yes. question. Not drunk fuzzy ones. And okay. not the first time she was in handcuffs. <laughs> okay. No. Yes. no Clarifying question. If you arrest her for a drunken public or mm -hmm. whatever, give her a ticket. Does she just sit in the drunk tank? Yes. Yeah. For six for the night? hour. Yep. So she sits in our little drunky tank for six hours until she roughly sobers up. And then she calls somebody to yep, pick her up. Yep. We kick her out the front door of the police yep. department and then she can figure it out from there. Right. Fair okay. enough. Thank you. So grab her in my police car because I'd walked him out to the car. I was like, sweet, car's right here. We're just going to throw her right in. Well, so as this happens, what I do not see in the crowd is her brother now decides to emerge. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. There's nothing like a protective brother, man. Yeah. So he comes out, hey, what the F, man? Blah, blah. I'm like, oh, hold on, pal. That's worse than a boyfriend. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Where were you when she was riding the lion? <laughs> Where were you when she was all of a dumb, sudden, Wait, did you ask right? that? <laughs> yeah. What did he say? He was like, whoa, 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 she was, uh, oh, uh, uh, she, I, I, he's was, just, I was at the bar. I was he watching. He is <laughs> just as drunk as she is, of right? Course, so of I'm course, like, of course. So I put her and go, look, 
Don't worry about it. She's going to be out in a little bit. We're going to sober her up. It, it's all going to be good. So I'm talking to you. All right. Here's what I don't see. As I'm now dealing with brother, boyfriend comes back to the picture. I knew it. I catch him out of the corner of my eye. I see him coming around. I was like, oh. <laughs> is this, this is the call that's never going to end. And I'm like... <laughs> So I'm just getting brother like wound down because then of course mom and dad come over right. Oh, it's a whole, oh my like, god! Do y'all want to go like, too? I'm like, look, <laughs> like she had a little too much to drink. She's riding a lion, or <laughs> right. So they're kind of like, oh, okay, I, I, like look, she's just gonna get sobered up. We're gonna let her go. She's gonna call you in a little bit to come pick her up from the police department. So as I'm as I'm talking to them, I see boyfriend hovering. Do, 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 do. He comes around the backside. So I'm watching oh him coming around. He's circling the he's scene. He's circling. I'm like, oh, what is this guy? Like, you should have just left. Like, now what? As he comes in, babe, I love you. He runs up and tries to pop open a police car door to rescue her. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yes. Rescue a handcuffed woman. Yeah. For a very low grade misdemeanor, high grade infraction, like For not sure. a big deal. Yeah. So he comes up, he's like, I got you, babe. And he goes to open the car door. I'm like, hey. I go, no, no, no. So I push my way, shut the door. No, she can call you too. F you. Here comes the second haymaker of the night. I was oh like, oh my God. These two are meant for each other, apparently. <laughs> As I see the slow motion haymaker, I was like, here we go. Did the same thing. Ooh. Backed up. Oh, I was hoping you were taking him <laughs> to the ground. Misses. He swings around. I grab him. I put him in handcuffs. And Clickety he goes, click. clickety clack. <laughs> he goes in the other side of the police car. So now I have both of them sitting handcuffed next to each other in the police car. Oh, my God. At no, at no point did you feel that you needed any backup, especially with the crowd? It wasn't like an unruly crowd. They were kind of like a curious, like, how do we like? And then after they saw that, they were like, oh. Like, they deserve He means it. business. <laughs> Yeah, we're sorry about that, officer. We're really, yeah, we'll just just tell her to call us. They were very reasonable about it, surprisingly. So I'm like, all right, I'm getting out of here before I'm, I can't fit anyone else in my car. We're leaving. <laughs> right. So I get in the car. You didn't want to so, put anyone in the middle seat? <laughs> Shotgun? Obviously, you, you've never been in the back of a police car before. No. <laughs> Does she look I like can't she has? say I have. Well, this is a podcast. You don't know what she really looks like. Oh, that's funny. Uh, there is no middle seat in a police ah. car. The back seat is a solid piece of plastic that has these concave butt seats yeah kind of and it's meant, interesting they're curved out so it's meant to have when your hands are handcuffed behind you that they you can fit, fit into the seat <laughs> oh yeah. and then you see you belt them across so they're like wait like so what's in, in the, the middle seat. just solid plastic mm. this is like oh. hard like plastic there's nothing in the middle do they have seat belts or are they kind of just like yeah it sucks yeah. to suck well no it's a it's a seat belt but it's not like where you grab it and click it in it's a um, it's just across your waist no so it's they have two so they one that goes across your waist that's designed it looks like um kind of like a race car seatbelt because oh, you have like the like the, okay. the quick release gotcha gotcha so you put it in and you grab the quick release to tie them down so you click it in it's got this large like strap handle that you pull to like cinch the seatbelt down and then there's a second one that goes across the the shoulder one huh. and it clicks in the same way you strap that thing down so you have two different belts to strap them into the seat which is kind of uses like a restraint too so if they're fighting in the right. back or you put them in you can kind of strap them into the seat Okay. Fun um, fact for anyone yeah. like myself who has never been in the back of a police car. Yeah, you should try it. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I did. I did like live with a police officer for a number of years, but we pretty much just saw. And when you say that, was it like car. in jail? Like they were, you lived there, and the police officers were there. At it the same was time, my. Or? It was my roommate. Oh, okay, that's a likely story. So anyhow, we get in the car. Time to go back to the station. When you got two lovebirds in the back, oh, strapped lovey in. Lovey dovey. And I, I love you, babe. I love you too. I do I'm anything sorry, for. I'm I got sorry, arrested I for you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, make it stop. Oh my you're, god, you're my ride or die. Literally. <laughs> well, no, I was the lion. The lion was the ride or die. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so all the way through the booking process, same thing. Screaming down the hallway, I love you, babe. Good I God. I love you, too. I was like, and the jailer looks at me, and she's like, really? <laughs> you did this to me. I go, enjoy your next six hours together. Six <laughs> hours. They're going to be here. Toodles. Oh, oh my gosh. God. Yep. That's hilarious. Ride the lion. Oh okay, so God. you know what's funny? Hmm. We've had We've had a couple of fun stories that have mm -hmm. dealt with drunks and whatnot. My phone reminded me the other day of a an issue that we dealt with. Do you remember <laughs> when I was at that hotel mm -hmm. in your precinct, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the DUI that came into the par the parking lot, the guy that was on the moped? Vaguely, yes, I do. This dude, so so we're walking, I'm walking the parking lot and there's this guy in the back that is sitting on a curb that is barely able to sit. 
so I called him and I'm like, hey, I've got a situation where I've got this guy who is clearly lit. <laughs> He rode in on a moped. He's not actively on it, so it's not like, you know, a MUI, a mopeding under the influence to oh go along God. with our BUI. Not like a, D- yeah. a BUI. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. riding under the influence, baby? I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, look, he's trespassing. He's drunk in public. He's not actively riding but you know what's what, a bicycle riding it's, it's still be a dui right DUI. yeah yeah the, the legal t- is still technically driving while a dwi so yeah. i think it still DUI. would be a dui yeah. well be, but i didn't see him driving he wasn't mm-hmm. actively riding it he was just sitting on the curb unsuccessfully like no this dude was like <laughs> yeah well yeah unsuccessfully this dude was literally like half a second from passing out like oh, he Lord. was he was blackout drunk and so Andy comes over, starts interviewing the dude, and he didn't even know that he was a cop. Like, he is so drunk. <laughs> oh he thought he was just like a hotel employee. Just belligerent, <laughs> F this, F that, F you. Because <clears throat> are you in, like, pretty plain clothes? Um, it, was a like, di- it was a different uniform. Yeah, I was in khakis, which I always said, you, you like, know you've made it in life when you can get to wear khakis to work. But, like, <laughs> ba- badge yeah. on the belt instead yeah, so of, we like, were on your chest. Ca- so uh, we, it was called a soft uniform. So what that means was, so I had khaki cargo pants, like the tactical, like, BDU-looking cargo so pants. So hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. In khaki. Yeah. We had a black polo shirt, and so on okay. the front, we had an embroidered badge on the front, yeah. and it had, uh, you know, resort services, tourism policing, had your name, you know, police officer, corporal, right. whatever it was. The back of the shirt was screen printed, police, you know, uh, so the it back, had all that. Though. Yeah. And then you had your gun belt on, and so on your belt, you know, you had your badge clipped on your belt, but it was a full, like, normal looking police belt, just okay. we were in a... We saw the salt. So we didn't have like patches on our shoulder. It wasn't like a traditional police uniform. But so you still looked. I usually got mistaken for like hotel security because the only thing that said police, like screaming police, was on the back of my shirt because it was it. in like, you know, eight, 10 inch tall block lettering. But when you're just talking to someone face to face, they or have you no see idea. That, like I have a gun and like all the police paraphernalia, like tasers and guns and batons and all kinds of other things, right? So. But, but if you're that intoxicated, you might you not don't notice know. this big ass belt that probably weighs 50 pounds. Yeah, nope. He didn't notice Jack. So what happened to him? Did you let him go? No, he ended up arresting. Uh, uh, arresting. <laughs> How much have we drank? <laughs> he ended up arresting the guy, but the guy was so plastered. He did not have any sort of clue who he was talking to. He just That's thought funny. he was going yeah. on a car ride. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wee. And the fact that he made it there <laughs> alive. That is what was shocking was to me. Sh- Shocking. Eek. Well, and you know, yeah, so alcohol is a funny thing. You know, we talk about this guy, and when you're drunk in public like that, we don't take like your blood alcohol. We don't make you like blow in a breathalyzer. We don't take your blood because in that, it's like you're obviously intoxicated be- because you weren't driving or anything else. There's no, we don't have to like pull blood or any other things that you would do for like a DUI. There was a DUI case, drive work at midnight, and so the, you know, this lady's kind of weaving down the road, right? I was like, oh, okay, you're drunk. So I pull over. She's got all the drunk type symptoms, but like drunk, like, you had one extra drink you probably shouldn't have had at the bar, right? Like, okay, very yeah. coherent, answering questions, but a little wobbly, a little slurry. A like, little too feisty. So I've been doing this job now for 15, 16 years. Right? So you like, can easily recognize someone under the influence. Yeah, it, I've done this for a time or two, right? So in my head, this lady's like a point one two one five, like, you know, the legal limit's point zero eight. Right. So I'm like, she's like a drink and maybe, maybe two past it, right? Thinking that she was okay. She's not obliterated. She's not obliterated. She's not blitz. She's not like Mopad Man, right? Like she's not uh, Lion Rider. Uh, yeah, she's not Lion Rider, right? <laughs> <laughs> she looks for the most part on the up and up. So I go, all right, you know, so we do the test. Yep, you're a little, you're a little drunky drunk. Time to go, right? We gotta go to jail, right? So we, right. oh, I'm sorry, officer. I didn't realize I was that, you know, whatever. So you have a driver back to the station, right? So we're doing all the thing, and so I go, okay. You, so you have your choice, right? You have. Blood, breath, urine. What, what do you want? Right. So like, oh, I'll do breath. That's I don't like needles. I'll do breath. Okay. Oh fair my enough, god. Right? Here you go. No problem. Blow in the machine. So she blows in the first time. Point three eight. Are you Whoa. kidding me? And I'm like, that can't be right. You'd be dead. I'm looking so. at this and I'm like, uh. No like, way. How are you talking to me like this right now? Yeah. I'm like, this has got to be wrong. So I was like, oh, okay. She's like, how'd I do? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, a, you're, you're you're a B plus student. Let me let me <laughs> let me check the machine real quick. So I go over. I'm like, eh, something's not right here. So I hit test mode, calibrate. Put the there's a little little machine you put on to calibrate, make sure everything's good, clear it out, right? <laughs> blowing the thing out, right? Everything <laughs> good. Change the mouth plate, right? So I'm like, okay. So I test, ping. Okay, calibrated. Okay. All right. So you're like, okay, okay. let's try that again. That wouldn't happen. Let's try this yeah, again. That was a practice round. Let's go again. <laughs> Morgan blows. 
point three eight. Are you what? kidding? And I'm like, there is no way. And I'm really like, good drunk. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So you have to wait a couple of minutes, right? Here you go again. Point three seven. <gasps> and I go, how much have you had to drink? And she's like, well, not more than I usually do. And what is that? That's the million dollar question. What? Okay, well, how much do you know? She goes, well, I usually do a fifth of vodka. Are you? No. And then I usually trail it with some tequila. But oh. tonight I had a couple beers in between. That might have done it. I'm sorry. I was like. What? A couple beers. That might have just put me over just a yeah, little just bit a, at the legal yeah, limit. Just a touch. I was like, how are you coherent, upright, speaking, and you only seem like a little drunky drunk? Like yeah. one or two cocktails pass. Yeah. I've known someone that got hospitalized because they were, I think it was like just almost a point two, mm-hmm. and they were like nearly dead. Yeah. The human like body. Like stomach pumped. Yeah. No, like alcohol they, poisoning. Yeah, they yeah. nearly got alcohol poisoning. They were almost, I think it was like a point one nine or maybe a point two something, yeah. and they were alcohol poisoned. Well, and a lot of it is the tolerance of the body, right? Like when yeah. you build it, when you're, when you're a functioning alcoholic, right, your body builds tolerances. To, she it, clearly it, had a problem. Oh, she had a huge problem. Wow. Because the human body, doesn't matter what your tolerance is, at about the point four plus range is... Death. Danger. Yes. Danger, 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 danger. Danger, Will Robinson, right? And you got to figure her body was such that she could have probably kept going and not have, you know, because your body's like breaking mechanism as you pass out from drinking too much. So you stop drinking, right? Yeah. Like that's part of the built in like mechanisms to make you not do that. Whoa. Well, even before that, like you puke. Yeah. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. So did you tell her what she blew? Yeah. And she's like, oh, that's high, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? I go, well, I guess comparatively speaking, yes, that is very high. <laughs> Right, like kind of like quadruple the legal limit. You are ma'am. more than you should be. Yeah, wow. and you just thought you were pulling someone over, like, eh, they're drunk. Yeah, I'm like, like oh, they're a little mm-hmm. drunky drunk, a eh, little, little bit, right? And it's like you, you you watch the performance of these things because there's no pass fail, right? It's just like how do you you know how do you follow directions? What's your balance? Like how do you all these different things? And she was like kind of decent. Yeah, like not horrible. That's why I said like in my head I've seen so many like in that point one two one five like you've had one or two more than you should have, right? It was a mistake. You, you had to get home. You thought maybe maybe you stopped drinking an hour ago and you're drinking a bunch of water, but you had too much early on, right? And your body hasn't metabolized For all sure. that down yet, For right? Sure. Like all these different things. It's like people like. I don't want to say honest mistake, but it's like in their head, they're like, ah, oh, no, I should be good. I haven't drank for like an hour. I had a bunch of water. When Jeez. Your body's not like, that's not the way it works. For, right, everyone, guys, wait. for everyone listening. Wait. wait, I'm just getting a yeah. ping from our research department. Yeah, um, so so our research department dove into this while we were discussing <laughs> it. Um, how much do you think she weighed within she within 20 probably... pounds? Oh, give him, give him 30. No, 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 because the chart that research sent up is showing oh, yeah. uh, in 20 pound increments. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. She was probably about five foot six ish five six five seven in that range average for a woman yeah she was average size so maybe like 130 ish plus or minus okay so, so she wasn't she wasn't like super skinny rail like anorexic like model skinny okay. but she wasn't like hmm. so you would say like, 120 to 140 yeah in that range would that be our range yeah, yeah. Uh, um sort of yeah so um we would be looking at anywhere between nine to ten drinks an hour an hour at a point three eight <laughs> An hour. Alcohol, Whoa. Yeah. Winning. An hour. That's crazy. I mean, Miss B, you and I have had a few cocktails together. I've never had that many in one, let alone one night. In a night. That, that's what, that's I'm, what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. In an hour, in a night. I don't even think I can take that many. Damn. Per hour. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's farking commitment. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to sneak a peek at your list. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No, don't, do it. don't, don't do it. ruin don't it. Do it. I'm so excited. You are not a part of the research team right now. <laughs> Ms. B, any uh, bees of the week? Me, I always have them. <laughs> if I may, what you're thinking. Yes. Let me, quick note of clarification. Sure. When you say any bees of the week. Mm. So we have the uh, A-hole of the week segment. Oh. But Ms. B has had some special winners. So we've created a new segment just for her, and it's Ms. B's Bee of the Week. Just so you know, depending on the listenership, if you tell a cop, hey, you have any bees this week? The California Penal Code section for prostitution is 647 subsection B. <laughs> so when you tell Wait, a cop. That's like, that's like slang. Like, 
Do you got any bees this yeah. week? Hey, you see bees out there? That means were there any prostitutes out there? Oh, but my God. Different definition for this pod. Yeah, mm-hmm. very radically different. That's so So funny. I'm like, ooh, did she have any bees? You got prostitutes at your hotel? Like, ooh, What's going ooh, on? I'm like, sure me too. What? Okay. So. I mean, she could. Well, yeah. Well, you know, our favorite uh, music industry convention is in town this next week. It sure is. It is all about, what, 50, 60,000 people. <laughs> Try a hundred, it's 100,000. It's 100,000 100, people in three days. And it is nothing but yes. coke and hose. Coke out, and out, hose. Outside so, of that just the gave convention. me chills. So, <laughs> speaking of stories that are on the list, but oh, I didn't want to run off. No, but no, no, you're good. Speaking of bees, there was a room at a certain hotel that was very close to the convention center. Not mine. No, not yours. Okay. And uh, we had a call one night that there is a nude woman running up and down the street. Oh. Long story short, uh, she was a bee. <laughs> In a room. You're a kind of bee or Miss B's kind of bee? No, my kind of bee. My kind of bee. Subsection B. Yeah. (laughs) In a room, the John of the proposition pushed her out to the balcony of the hotel, (gasps) which was on the third story, and promptly locked the slider and left. Oh. (laughs) The problem is the point of the negotiations was that she was unclothed. Oh. And now locked on a balcony on the third story of said hotel. Yikes. Which the obvious course to resolve said issue is to jump off the balcony into the planters below. Ouch. uh, Which she landed in dirt, a couple of shrubberies, and I believe a bird of paradise. Oh. uh, To be specific. Yeah. Mid-business transaction. Mm. Yeah, negotiations broke down midway through. Oh my God. So she got booted to the balcony? Yes. That's that's rather (laughs) unfortunate. And also unpaid oh i guess you negotiate that before you take your clothes off well negotiation was made but payment had not been so there was an outstanding invoice for her services <laughs> but that's also See, her mistake uh, that's, yeah that's just bad business yeah <laughs> she didn't she didn't get a deposit no down payment so that's why you it, run it for incidentals yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. <laughs> So as she emerges covered now in dirt and shrubbery, shrubbery um, a few scratches. Now this is this is which means that there's people out to like all the wee hours of morning. This is like ten thirty at night. So all these people see this naked bee bee bopping down the road. <laughs> she now panics, realizing like, ooh, this might be a problem. She runs in the lobby, screaming that she got thrown off a balcony by her husband. Oh. oh. Nah, well, that, that's not that's not going to deflect very well. No, it didn't. It, it took the two officers. They got there about two seconds to figure out what was going on here. You're mm. still naked in a lobby. Yep. Did she get her clothes? <laughs> no, because it wasn't her room. <gasps> oh, so what did you do? Awesome. Have to like give her a towel or a robe? We didn't give like... her anything. The hotel was very lovely and gave her a bathrobe to leave that's the good. premises. <laughs> I would have given her a plastic bag. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Black trash bag. All right, guys. Ready for the B? Let's bring it. The B hole, the A hole, whatever you want to call it miss b's version of the bee of the week so today i'm going to read you guys a nice little story Ooh. um this is a review that came in this morning i was gonna say are you an author now mm. I, I am i am wow. so this review came in this morning and my entire staff has all read it and all day just been cackling over it just because it's odd i'll start off by this the member is our highest tier of our rewards program and they rated the property is an 8 out of 10. Okay. So for those of our listeners that think, oh, that's pretty decent, that's a fail in in our world. 10 out of 10. Yep. It is a fail, but still keep in mind, it's an 8 out of 10, okay? It's a high fail. All right, their overall comment. Hate to be neutral instead of a promoter. What are you, Switzerland? (laughs) Yes. Mm. The check-in killed me, period. You're dead now? Well, you're still... So you're writing from the grave? What's going on here? Exactly. The check-in... Ghost writer. ...killed Mm -hmm. me. Kelly, we're going to call her. Kelly Kelly is an associate of mine. She works at the property. (laughs) Kelly wanted to show me she was in control, and I was the peasant. Yes, the peasant. Checking in. (laughs) Okay. It was her world, and I was merely a player in it. Is Kelly the B in this whole story? Like, what? (laughs) Don't don't hate the player, hate the game. I, 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 I hate this. I, we were all just like, what? It goes on. I just don't know why. You can't be consistent at hotels with check-in. I already checked in on the app and you torture me at 1 a.m. with Kelly. Torture. That, we tortured you it. with the check-in that was process? It. And we have no idea what happened. We have no idea what went wrong. This we- <laughs> sounds like an SMM kind of guest. 
He likes <laughs> yeah. to be tortured, dominated, and he's a peasant. Oh, uh, what is that? that, that the like, verb Sexually choice. humiliated. Yes. I, yeah, I'm thinking you're checking at 1 a.m. What are you doing there at 1 a.m., pal? Hey, I'm sorry. There's a foot out there for everybody, okay? <laughs> okay I'm not judging. I'm but not being judged. But he does not want Kelly's foot. You, yeah. you, you this, knew that was coming. This yeah, just in from the resident deviant. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so that that literally that has perplexed us all day long. All the staff and everyone's been taking turns reading it and laughing, being like, "What the hell? What is the customer service like history with Kelly? Never gotten one of these before. Like, no news is good news." Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie; she's an overnight associate. They're not normally like of star course. customer service of employees. Course. Yeah, but this this review kind of <laughs> just like have we pulled what? the history of the guest because I'm wondering. Yeah. I would start there personally. Well, excuse me. Excuse me. <gasps> I like to check in because I don't want to deal with these peasants. Scum. Yeah. And don't give me Kelly to talk yeah. to. Yeah. Well, Otherwise I she'll mean, treat you like a peasant. I understand that she's kind of domineering. I'm in room 213. <laughs> you know, hey. I did email this guy, though, and I formulate my response. Coming from the office of the bourgeoisie, we'd like to talk to our peasants. <laughs> yeah. We'd, sure, we'd like to offer you some cake that we would also like that you could eat as well. Yeah. No, but literally, I did email and try to be as professional as possible and say at the same time, what the f*** happened? <laughs> After all of that, he was like, I'd still give you a B. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the part that's that makes what, me laugh. Exactly. Yeah. It's still 8 out of 10. Like, but all of was, those comments, <clears throat> still yeah, 8 if, out of 10. If somebody's going to treat me like a peasant, I'm not going to give you an 8. I mean, unless, I mean, I guess unless that's what you really How want. How you treat your yeah. peasant. But, but is that the score of property overall? Or yes. just, oh. Still gave an 8 out of 10, which to a normal person, you would think... Was this a just, solid B. Was this just a one night stay? Yeah. What was the staff service score? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, that would have, maybe that was like should have been lower, right? Like the overall hotel, everything was lovely, but boy, that Kelly just still gave right. her a six. Huh. Ooh. Still gave her a six. This guy's hey. generous. Yeah. And gave Cleanlin us a nine. There hey. you go. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. Okay, is nine passing? Yes. yes. Nines and tens are passing. Yeah. That's so it. give everyone tens. Is that what you're telling me? I don't rate yes. nine. Yeah. Or nine. I don't rate anyone. Although I was just at another property recently in a city that will go unnamed. And it looked very lovely. And I roll in and so I'm here checking and I walk in and I'm like, So this doesn't really look like the pictures. Uh oh. Right. Whatever, right? I'm like, get it, glamour shots. So I check in, they're very nice. Oh, here's here's your room, Alan. Thank you. So I walk up, I walk to the elevator, I'm going up. I'm like, oh, this is fine. And the door opens into a time warp of 1991. <laughs> Nothing like the picture. <laughs> Nothing. I walk out in the hallway to go down to my room. And it is the 1991. The The rug is like green and pink. All the fixtures are gold. The frames are like the most generic artwork in a gold matted frame. Groovy. I'm that's like, not 90s. That's 80s. Yeah. It was yeah. like it was on the cusp. It was like the 91. Like, it's it makes me like, think of Fresh Prince right? of Bel-Air for sure. Like oh, 91, sure. but we haven't remodeled yet. No. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because it's now 2023, right? We're, we're a little bit past that. I walk into the room and it didn't get any better. It got worse. I was oh, like, no. What, how has this hotel not been remodeled since it was built? That's insane. And so I'm like, well, all right, whatever. So I sit down and I have a Zoom call, right? So I'm sitting in the room, I Zoom. And the people in the Zoom call are like, where, are, where, where are, you? are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm in a hotel. Like, can we see it? So I pick up, like, so I'm they like, oh my see God. It? Yeah, they want to see it. So I get the, the score, right? I'm like, <sighs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Is this somewhere like work has sent you? Yeah. And they have paid for it? Yeah. Mm. Well, when I, say I was work, just kind of judging you if you like picked this yourself. Well, no, no, I did. No, I did. <laughs> because the pictures said it was lo- like I looked at the pictures; they were lovely, right? That was only this, the first floor of remodeled remember, rooms. I, I run the organization, right? So it's like when work sends you, I sent myself, and so I'm like, oh, it's a full service hotel. So I'm usually like, oh, okay, full service hotel, right? From the '90s, like it had not been touched since it was built. That's insane. And so. I'm like, okay. They were, they were lovely people. It was nice. It was clean, but it was like... So scores. What'd you give them? So the score comes in. So I'm like, all right. So knowing how this works, I'm like, I got to say something because the people on my call were like, where are you? What yeah. is going on? It's not just like, I was like, oh, bad choice on my part. Like, Did you intend to recommend it? <laughs> that would be a no. <sighs> so... That's staff, for number one. Staff, 10. Food was really good, 10. Friendly. I, and, but then it came down to... It was like... Maintenance and decor. Yeah. And I was like... I'm gonna okay. go negative here. No, no. Can I guess? Go a three, one. Yeah, I because that's the lowest you can go. But are you were you nice and like gave it a five? I gave it a seven. What? Oh. I was nice. Because now think again, it's, it's still failing, 70s. but it's like a high failing, right? Uh, and but I had to you write got a comment. Mocked at. 
Oh, so wait, I, so wait. Here, comes, here comes the verbatim. So I had to write, so I had to write a comment. Okay, I'm like, you just can't throw that out there and be like, mic drop and walk away, right? Although they probably are fully aware of the problem of their property, right? A three <laughs> would have been a mic drop. A seven. So I did seven. I go, I understand this is failing. <gasps> oh, that's nice. nice. That's nice. I know how it works. I go, look, I go, the people were great. The food was great. Everyone was very friendly. Like, I essentially wrote everything you could control was lovely, but I walked into a time warp of 1990. <laughs> And I go, it normally wouldn't have been a problem, but I was on a Zoom call and they even noticed the time warp I was in, in which case it now detracted from the business Zoom call I was on to talk about how poor the room decor was. That's so embarrassing for them. Oh my God. So I, I go, get a hotel room So I go, look, tour. and you know, kid says, you know, would you recommend property? And I say, I go, look, I, 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 I don't want to, I, I can't because- Based unless, on the pictures, unless, yes. Unless I roll it in my Ford Probe for a 90s convention or yeah, something. Yeah, I think, I think that went over me and Miss B's head. Unless Once, it's a theme. Stay. No, no, yeah. no. What's a Ford probe? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Bill knows what's going on. I owned a probe. Damn right you did. Nin- 1996. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Look that thing up. And so I was like trying to be as nice, but I'm like, you can't, like, how is this passing QA? Like, how has Marriott, like, skipped this property in the time warp world? It like, can't how be. did this happen? So I send this thing off. Maybe 15 hours go by. Maybe. I get an email from the general manager. Yeah, because we have to. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, so in my head, I'm like, oh, God, I caused this guy more grief. Like, I was trying to, like, make it just enough to where they're like, oh, yeah, it's another, I know we got a remodel. Like, I was trying to make it like that so I didn't, <laughs> like, it didn't elicit a response. Sure enough, so GM, hi, really? We appreciate your business. We're so happy for yeah. your loyalty and blah, 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 what do you say? We're fully aware of our outdatedness. Or actually, you know what? Hold on a second. Let me go to the research. Board. Our I need think I still, of remodel. I think I still have his email. I think it's. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So, the dramatic reading of the general manager's email. Oh, you found it. The research team got back to you. Thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts regarding the condition of our property. We agree. <laughs> we are in the final design phase of a full renovation that is scheduled to begin later this year. Once again, we thank you for taking time to share your feedback, and I appreciate your choosing to stay with us. It's just a cookie cutter. Copy, paste, send. Yes, to every single guest. Preset template. Literally, Mm -hmm. if you click the drop down, it says renovation. You click that one, that (laughs) is what pops up. Yep. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, my favorite at the property Bill and I last worked at together, we were in desperate need of a reno as well. Like several guests commented that it looked like the 80s threw up all over our hotel. Yeah, there was a lot of pink and teal. And brass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was ugly to say the very least, but we got close comments all the time. Well, and you know, and something else to keep in mind, the problem with the renovations in hotels, like think about it this way. You get a renovation in 2022. Mm-hmm. But because of the time it takes to do the renovations and the planning, the designs they are start, from... They start the renovation like 2018. Uh, yeah. But then there's designs, there's permitting, there's revisions, there's you know establishing your vendors, there's getting the furniture manufactured, there's shipping, there's all these things. Mm-hmm. So when the renovation actually hits, you're it's already... Kind of out of style. Out of style, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I am actually going through that right now with a fitness center remodel. That well, there you go. I started in October. <laughs> and it will hopefully be finished by October this October yeah. maybe possibly uh, hopefully. here's to hoping give yep. me a prayer for my equipment lead times that's all I'm saying yep you'll have like a brand new gym and nothing inside of it like aren't the walls pretty you'll have a brand new gym and all the old equipment that yep <laughs> well no because we're timing leased equipment being sent back mm that we've already extended our lease. So I have a hard date to send equipment back. Gotcha. And we better be in construction. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, the timing of it is just, you don't even want to know. Well, at least it's after summer. Uh, <laughs> Our potential install day is July 31st. Ooh, yeah. or not. Yeah. So speaking of time warps, Ooh. who likes the 70s? That no was, one raises their hand. No, nothing good came out of the 70s. <laughs> this story did. Oh, oh. excited. It's going to say Love that it. was far before my time. <laughs> so very early in my career, I've been working for well, maybe a couple years or so, and I get assigned to the missing person task force. <gasps> ooh. Now, you say, ooh, but back then it was like every 16-year-old who, I like my boyfriend and mom or dad's like, nope. And they're like, I'm going to run away, right? And then- Missing gotcha. person. Missing person, right? I watch so, a lot of SVU. I know that. Yeah. So it's not- <laughs> 
when I say that, and again, not to like downplay missing free because it's a very serious thing, but yeah. most of the folks that we were working with, like 99% were Runaways. like the runaway, and then you find them like the very next day because they okay. come trucking home after like, you know, their boyfriend's parents are like, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Like, you don't, yeah. like, and then they call their parents, you know, your daughter is here, you know, your son, right? Whatever it is. Oh my God, I called the cops. Yes, exactly. But there's a large amount of people that report these things like that. And then when they come home, they never bother to call back to say like, hey, oh, no. they came home. So you still have this so you open, have, yeah, these open investigation. Cases, right? So I get assigned to this unit and they go, look, you have like 100 open cases of which probably 99 have all been returned. You just got to make contact with these people because they never bothered to call back wow. right, to make sure. So you know, I'm going through this list. And, That's so mundane. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> so I'm going through this list and I get down to this one case. And it was a couple years old. And no one's been able to reach anybody, right? They move, change their phone number, whatever it is, right? But it's a permanently open case until you say recovered, found, solved, whatever it is. So I get a little creative and I figure out that the reporting parent, who is dad in this case, had co-signed for a car for somebody like a year prior with an, like it had like a newer address on it. I was like, oh, all right. right. Okay. We have a clue, right? Okay, let me go figure this out. So I drive out to the house. And so I don't even know if this is the right person, right? I don't know if it's the person that they co-signed for or is it dad's house you're like, just I, knocking on a door i'm just knocking on a door like hi please we're looking for so and so right so i go up i knock on the door and i and i don't see the car in the driveway that i found there's a couple other cars i don't see this car so i'm like and, and this happens pretty often like they're renting a room or something right there's all okay. kinds of different yeah. things so i go up i knock on the door i go hey is you know mr smith here and uh, she's like um no but what what do you like? I'm sitting there in uniform, right? And they're like, I'm confused, right? Like, what? I'm his wife. I go, <gasps> oh, okay, cool, great. Is he missing? <laughs> And I'm like, all right, well, um, I'm here investigating this missing person case of so-and-so, which I would probably presume would maybe be your daughter or your stepdaughter. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, that's my stepdaughter. I go, okay, fair enough. I go, well, she was reported missing like two and a half, three years ago, and we haven't been able to get a hold of Mr. Smith now. So I'm just trying to confirm, is she back? What's going on? She goes, oh, yeah, no, she was here like last week, you know, because now she's like 19 or 20 years. She's an adult by this point, right? Okay. I go, but in order for me to clear this case, I got to talk to your husband. Where is your husband at? He, oh, well, he's at work right now. Okay, perfect. Where does he work? At? Oh, he's right around the corner, maybe 10 minutes away. Perfect. Not a problem. I go, no one's in trouble. I just, I'm detective. I got to clear this out. She's like, oh, no, I totally understand. Thank you so much, right? I go, okay, well, I'm going to head over there. I go, I'll head over, just talk to your husband real quick, and we're all good. She's like, okay, great, fine. So I get in the police car. I drive over 10 minutes over to go walk in. Now, remember, the name that he co-signed on this car for is not his wife's name. Okay. So keep that in mind. Oh, no. Uh, and I had asked her, I go, well, who's so-and-so? Oh, that's my husband's co-worker. They're, she's a family friend of ours. Ooh. And she was trying to get a car. Spicy. And she had some issues. Spicy. And so we co-signed, right? So I was like, okay, I was trying to piece all this together. I was like, all right, fine. But I'm like, huh, okay. So I drive over to his work. I go, hey, is Mr. Smith here? Um, no, he's not. He's, he's not in today. He took the day off. <gasps> hmm. Eek. Do, do you ask where the woman is? So that's my next question. You remember, wife said she was a coworker, family friend right, coworker. Right, right. I go, okay, um, next question is Miss So and so here. Uh no, she's off today. Oh no, she hasn't worked here for about a year. Oh fair enough. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. Is there anything wrong? I go, no, 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 nothing's wrong. He he was a reporting person in a case. I'm just trying to follow up. There he's just a witness. I'm just Did you ask for his contact info in any of this? The employer won't usually give that up unless you have like for a sure. warrant or something else like that. Sometimes you can ask, but usually HR gets a little weird to the wife i didn't ask the wife at the time because i'm thinking oh just he's at work right yeah and you got to talk to him anyways. yeah I'm gonna, i gotta talk to him anyhow to make sure it is who i'm i gotta check his id and stuff make sure he's who, who says is right but so like can like, you go back to the wife and be like hey he's not at work he took oh, the day off what do you think i did so now did i'm you like go straight back to her something's off so now like the plot thickens right so i get back and police car go driving back over to the house but when I drive back to the house i pull up and now there's a new car in the driveway he he's home which is this bright Fire engine red Chevy Avalanche. I will never forget this. Ew, that's ugly. It has bright, big chrome rims. I mean, it's as flashy and gaudy as you can imagine. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So I get out of the car, come around the front. Here comes Mr. Smith. Now, Mr. Smith looks like he's out a out of a Spanish soap opera. <laughs> uh-huh. He's got the big 70s hair. His shirt has only about one button, which is like somewhere right around his navel, right? Oh, the whole God. Thing, and it's like iron pressed open sideways, right? 
gold chain. He's got the Mr. T starter kit around his neck. Right? <laughs> I mean, this guy looks like he came fresh out of a Spanish soap opera. A hundred percent. Right. He's on the cover. He's like him and like Fabio is on the cover of like. That these, is like, funny. And he comes hustling out of the house. And he's like this slow run. Oh, my friend, amigo. And he's yelling to me across the front. That yard. is not what I was anticipating. And I was like. Okay. And Kim's like, yo, he's, oh, my friend, senor. And he grabs me and comes over and goes, yo, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. I go, I really want to talk to you too. Can I see your ID first to make sure you are like what I'm talking to, right? Yeah. So he's like, yeah, that's Mr. Smith, right? Okay, sir. Okay, hey, I got a question for you, right? So is so and so your daughter? Yes. Okay, is she back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he gives me the whole story. She ran away. She came back the next day. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Then we moved and we changed phone numbers. And so he gives me the whole story. Okay, right. thank you so much. So, okay, and clear that case. Everything's good, right? Everything's. I go, but I. I got to ask. <laughs> I just went to, he's like, shh. <laughs> Can we talk about that? <laughs> and I go, what's up? He goes, you, so um, you talked to my wife earlier? I go, yeah, about 20 minutes ago. He goes, yeah, my work called me saying that you had come looking for me. <laughs> yeah, sure did. He goes, so um, I go, let me guess. <laughs> Like my second day on the job here, but is it fair to say you were at Miss So and So's house, whom you co signed for the car for, that no longer works with you, that you took a day off for, so your wife thinks you're at work, but you're really actually at her house? And he's like, Let's not tell my wife that. <laughs> I'm sure he's like getting in real close, like, My friend. Yeah. Like, like in my, my ear, friend. like, My friend. Oh not my tell God. My wife that. And I was me like, amigo. <laughs> yep. And with like the very strong smell of like really cheap cologne. Gross. You had to cover you had to cover up the perfume. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. It's like generic brute, like the really, really right. For sure. And I go, You're the reporting party. I have no reason to talk to anyone else. My case is clear. You enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Oh my oh, god. Oh my oh, friend. My friend. Oh. <laughs> I was like, uh, and he tries to hug me. And I'm like, nope, no, nope. Absolutely not. Nope. I just fist pump. Have a great fist day. Fist Have a <laughs> lovely day, sir. You enjoy the rest of your good luck to you. I'm going to go oh. ahead and close that case. Thank you. Yep. I got back in my car and could not get out of there fast enough. Yeah, but you are forever on his Christmas list. Oh, yep. for sure. People. I'm not the least surprised, but it's still funny. Yep. Still to this day. I have, like, a, I have a follow-up question, though. With the description of the shirt and the gold chains, mm. did, he have, did he have bell bottoms, too? Kind of. He had, like, the modern... So it was, like, these black, like, polyester pants, right? Kind of, and, he, and he had, like, the man boots on. Uh, you know what okay. I mean? Like, the man dress boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, with a little... It was, like, a boot cut. It wasn't... <laughs> I wouldn't call it a bell bomb. It's more like a boot cut. Okay. Okay. But yeah, he had that going on. He had, it was he had this bright red silk shirt with like the intricate like gold patterns in there. Yeah. Like God, shirt. It's hilarious. Matched. He was just as flashy as his truck was. Did you ever yeah. actually find somebody who was indeed missing? Or oh was yeah. It mostly just chasing doing paperwork. Uh, yeah, like I said, ninety five percent were just chasing paperwork. There was a, a number of them that we actually found. She was. 15 or 16 or something like that and same thing like i meant it out i want to date who i am mom's like mm -mm, right mm. so anyway long story short she absconded to pennsylvania from california Whoa. oh yeah very crafty did the old greyhound bus trick okay and so she'd been missing for probably maybe two or three days before mom because mom had kind of had some contact with her along the way and, but mom thought she was like at a friend's house here like was just being <laughs> like i'm not coming home not making she, calls she didn't fully, from the greyhound bus on right. the way to pennsylvania she didn't fully think that she had legitimately absconded and ran away right and this was in the early era of cell phones so we could like ping and track the gps but it wasn't like a smartphone necessarily it was like in that huh. early kind of like advanced flip phone kind of phase so after like two or three days of her refusing to come home she finally called us obviously go take the report comes across so now we're maybe four days deep into this thing and so i'm talking to mom we end up doing a search warrant on the cell phone to figure out where this thing is pinging from like roughly where is it and it's not yeah. like today where it's like you're within 10 feet this was like within like 30 miles. miles yeah, yeah. It was a, thing pings to pennsylvania <laughs> and i'm like did you blow uh, it and reboot it again yeah <laughs> uh, is this thing on hello like is this thing working i go okay well, who's she been talking to so we piece together that there's this boyfriend character that is back in pennsylvania who is 18 or 19 or something well in california that's a big no-no right yeah. like you can't yeah. be like 18 is like the cutoff point right like 18 and above is fine but you can't go like below and above that line so we figure out a bit we figure out where the guy where she is where the guy at the guy's house we kind of have an address so we piece this whole thing together how did these two individuals meet internet how else <sighs> 
Was I right? AOL AIM. Thank you. I was hoping. I was really hoping. You have mail. Yes. (laughs) ASL. So I call (laughs) the police department back there. I'm like, hey, we got this missing runaway. She's at this location. Right. Here's what's going on. They're like, okie dokie. No problem. So they go out there and they swoop her up. Right. And so the officer calls me from there. I go, okay, what's going on? Okay, yeah, hey, here's what's going on. We found her. Everything's fine. She's safe. This, you know, so we're talking. I go, okay, hey, I go, um, can you do me a favor and ask me these series of questions, right? So they're like contact, engagement, sexual contact, all those types of things. She's in my head. I'm like, okay, if she's back there, like naughty things are going on and that's a crime out here. Right. So as I'm talking to him, he's like, oh, uh, uh, why do you want me to ask you that? I go, well, I'm trying to figure out if we have a crime. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, hey, bro, uh, say Pennsylvania, you just have to be within two years of the person you're with after the age of like 14. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, you can have like 14, 16, 15, 17, 16, 18. Oh. He's like, it's all good. Like as long as you're within two years of each other from the age of 14, it's all fine. I was like, oh, gee dokie, not out. He goes, well, what is it in California? I go, well, it's 18 or over. And that's the hard cutoff point. And he's like, really? I go, yeah. He goes, well, lucky for you, you have no crime out here. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to keep that from mom. I'm not going to tell her that. Uh, but does it matter state of residence versus state of... State it's of, where the it's crime occurred. where the crime occurred. Ah. And technically, because you're in Pennsylvania, no crime nah. occurred because you're within two years of each other. Mm. I watch a lot of cop shows. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I watch, like, I know. <laughs> I went, I took a class in law. I took law 101, just so you know. So I heard that all the time. I'm becoming an attorney. I took law and I know my rights. Oh, God. I was a criminal justice major <laughs> at my junior college, and I have my AA. Okay. Um, for your information, I'm a Yelp elite, so you need to treat me amazing. Yep. I'm like kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, can I ask a question? You may. Just because this came up, and I've always wanted to know this because I mm-hmm. talk to police officers a lot at work. Why do they always ask me my location if they know where I am? It drives me nuts. You mean like when you call, like, where are you? Yeah, like th- this happens at work, but also like I I was on the phone. I was on my cell phone and mm-hmm. I, I have all the locations, everything turned on. Nice. And I re- was reporting a drunk driver that nearly hit me and then nearly hit like six other people on the mm-hmm. highway. With dispatch? Like yeah. 911? And they're asking, where are you? And I was like, can't you see me? And they're like, no, no where no. are you? We are not that sophisticated, funny enough. That when you call 911... Uh, depending on your phone, your carrier, there's some dynamics that happen here. Currently, it will route you to the city that you're in usually. So it used to be back in the day, you called 911 from your cell phone, you're getting California Highway Patrol if you're in California, period of the story. And then they would ask you, where are you? And you're like, I'm in Riverside, I'm in San Bernardino. And then they're like, hold please. And then they would transfer you to usually the CHP office that would cover that area because they're assuming you're on the freeway. And you're like, I'm at this intersection, that intersection. And the CHP is like, oh, tag, not it, not our problem. Then they transfer you to like the sheriff's oh police God. department, right? So it's this master cluster of like trying to get you to like help. Currently in California, when you call, the GPS is going to get you to the the area in which you're in. So if it's like Riverside Police Department or sometimes the county sheriff, depending where you're at, but they don't know exactly where you are. So the idea is like if you call 911 and it's, a, it's called 911 open line, you call 911, you don't say anything, but from your cell phone, it comes across as the dispatch call is 911 open line from a cell phone in the area of Maine and First. But how come, like, if I order an Uber, they know exactly where I am? Because <laughs> different different service, <laughs> different, different service, different uh, different privacy, different authorizations, different. Because like all those I types swear, of I, one one yeah. makes money, one spends money. Yes, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Yep. And huh. so they will always ask for your most current location to figure out where you are because they know you're within a thousand feet of the tower at Main and First Street, but they don't know what corner you're on, what area you're on. So as an officer, you show up to this 911 call in the area of Main and First, it could be in an apartment, it could be in a hotel, it could be in a house, it could be in the subway underground, it could hmm. be it could be anywhere. So you're just kind of like looking around, like it's anyone look like it, like you're driving, like listening at the car window, like. Do you hear anyone like yelling or screaming? So what do they do if someone gets kidnapped? That's a little bit slightly more sophisticated. Well, now... We can't see that necessarily. So there's a legal process that you have to call the cell phone carrier and say, hey, this is what we're working on, right? Work on a kidnapping, work on whatever. We then have to get what's called an emergency authorization that we have to then later have to follow up with a search warrant. So you say, hey, Miss B's been kidnapped. We're trying, this is your phone and we're trying to figure out where she's at. If I don't have a family friend of yours that has like share my location or something that shows more real time, I have to call the carrier. The carrier then has to give me that authorization. I then have to use their software and I have to promise, cross my heart, up to die, stick a needle on my 
FYI, I'm going to give a search warrant. And even still, that's a bit of a delayed response as opposed to just going on an iPhone and looking at. So if I get kidnapped, you're mm-hmm. calling Liz to find out where I am? Pretty much. Oh my God. Just make sure I'm in your emergency contacts. Yeah. Shoot. So it does, it does work, but it, it's a much longer process than like going okay. into like find my friend. Or clarifying, well, clarifying question. Yeah. It has been brought to my attention recently because I am a frequent attendee and I'm our safety meetings Mm -hmm. you can nerd sorry go on i nerd out on it (laughs) i swear you can text 911 Yes, that is a oh, I know that. recent legislation. That- so, like, can you send your location, like, current location to oh. 911 via text? Depends on the agency. So, the text to 911, you got to think, we're the government. So, let's start there. It's not an iPhone. <laughs> it's coming on, and you're on this no IBM. Wallet. It's an IBM Damn. 486 uh, PC Pentium processor that's with the big screen with just the green right so it's not it's not i message um <laughs> oh this is not at least so not a trs80 that, yeah that that uh <laughs> the radio check is a tandy right <laughs> it will come through as a text into like the texting portal for lack mm-hmm. of better terms but it's not like on your apple where you pull up i messaging right? like similar so to not aim the same. Uh, yeah that's a good way to put it but still you get <laughs> emoji cons no not stuff um okay. yeah it's very rudimentary like you can text to 911 but you're getting text only you're not getting a lot some agencies do have the ability to accept video, phone, or right. um, pictures and stuff like that. But universally, everyone can accept the text message because the idea is that if you can't call, you can't talk, that you can text for help. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Wild. But they're still going to ask you where you are. Where are you? Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm in a truck nuts. going somewhere. Well, where is that? Right? Like, Dude, this was literally the conversation. I'm like, uh, I'm on the 60 and uh, I, I pass. And I said the like, thing I passed, and they're like, are you going east or west? I'm like, I don't know. Look at my location. <laughs> yep. If you don't know which way you're going, you give them the next two or three like exits in the way that you're traveling, yep. and, and they, they can, can figure, figure out, out which way you're going. Because I'm still getting used to that area, and I don't know which is east and which is west. Are you going I, up or down on the I'm street? I'm going to Riverside. I didn't bring my compass. I don't know. <laughs> it's wow. probably telling you the direction on your dashboard yeah it's possible but well, literally i nearly got hit by a drunk driver who was swerving all over the road and i swerved to get out of the way and then they almost hit three other people so i was panicked my adrenaline was going okay so the problem with all of this is that you watch too much svu yeah mm-hmm. i do or because in the police shows that's the only way that you get dna back within two hours yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know cell phones are, yeah cell mm-hmm. phones are automatically tracked within three feet mm-hmm. <laughs> i was also thinking of uh nine one one. do you watch that show like no. re- like reno nine one one. no no nine one one. do you know that show? no i know what you're talking about so they'll, they'll be like on dispatch like, <laughs> what's your emergency oh yeah <gasps> i'm getting let me just ping your location really quick and they're like then they call the cops and tell them exactly where they're at that's and not they're, and they're how there it in works like 18 seconds that's literally not how it works no no so yeah fun funny. fact to our listeners you can text 911 yeah maybe yeah. send them in, your in coordinates mo- instead of in your current location via your iphone states so check your local state oh yeah that's true for, we have listeners everywhere yeah check, check your local, local listings yeah check your local listings uh most well if anyone well, hasn't figured it out we're in california yep and this state has it. Sorry, all good stuff. I've literally been dying to know that, so thank you. Yeah, inquiring minds want to know. So on that note, let's wrap this episode up. Liz, take us home. Well, thank you so much for listening to another fantastic episode of Tales from the Service Industry. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Thank you, Miss B, as always. Pleasure to be here. And thank you, Andy, for joining us again. Oh, so lovely to be back. It was fantastic to have you. So thank you guys for listening, and we will see you again in a couple weeks. avenuepodcast.net